Hi, my name is Shane Gitmed, and one, I would just like to thank you so much for tuning in to my podcast and this episode where I'm covering my journey with the holistic lifestyle, what I went through to heal, and where I'm at now. So this goes back to 2012. And for all of my life, I've been really healthy. I've never had any allergies. I didn't have anything majorly wrong. I was pretty normal, I would say. And one day, so this is when I was living in Texas due to a family member's career. And I was living there. And of course, it's it's very different from where I grew up. I'm from California. And this part of Texas was the desert. So at this time, I was living there for maybe about a year. And all of a sudden, I started noticing that I was getting um, a lot of like rashes type situation. And I've never had any issues with my skin. I've never had like even blemishes. Like I honestly just had really good skin. And I started noticing these patches, dry patches, and they all kind of looked different. And so I was wondering, what in the world is going on? So I go to my doctor, and they're telling me, we don't know what this is, and you're going to have to um, get some allergy testing. So I say, okay, I'm going to go see an allergy specialist. That's fine. I go see the allergy specialist, and they do blood testing, skin testing, And then they came to find out that I had a ton of allergies and I was basically allergic to everything. And when I say everything, I mean almost every food (laughs) item you could think of, environment, animals. It was just the whole, like the whole chart. And when you go in to get your allergy testing done, you're given this form where you fill out a questionnaire and you mark off, you know, what parts or I'm sorry, um, what foods that you typically eat. And I grew up being like a picky eater. So (laughs) I really didn't eat like too many things anyway, but there were some things that I would, you know, eat every now and then. So I would mark it anyway, because I figured, you know, I I am exposing myself to this, so I might as well. I also um, had my first dog at this time. And at this point, I had only had her for a year as well. So so I get this testing done and I, I'm just shocked at the results. I'm like, what? Like, how am I this highly allergic to everything? And then just to top it all off, I'm told that part of my environmental allergies shows that I was even allergic to the area I lived in. And I was like, how is that even possible? And it was to the Southwest. Um, it was Southwestern, um, plants and the dust that was in the air and so I was just like okay so what what am I gonna do like should I just because moving was not an option at this point um my significant other was deployed overseas so I'm just like well I can't move right now um I can't like I was just trying to brainstorm like what is a real possibility like what is my next course of action and I guess I should rewind a little bit before I jumped to the allergy specialist. There were a couple of instances that I did have to go to the emergency room because I would get hives, but at the time I didn't know it was hives. I would just get these rashes that came, you know, on your skin and on different parts. And when they always tell you, like, don't look up your symptoms online. But during that time, I just wanted answers and I'm living in a place I am still adjusting to. So I had no clue like what to expect. So, um, so yeah, I had gone to the ER a couple times and they would keep telling me the same thing that we don't know what this is. It looks like an allergic reaction, but we don't know what's causing it. And so it was just this frustration of this merry-go-round constantly trying to figure out like, how am I going to fix something that I don't even know what it is? Every doctor or nurse that I'm talking to doesn't know either. So it just kind of felt like, how am I ever going to get better? So thankfully, this allergy specialist, um, and this had been going on for quite some time, this allergy specialist tells me, okay, so since you 
have all of um, these allergies, he explained it to me in a way saying that um, because it was showing up in my blood test that I must have always been really allergic. It just took time for it to activate. And the part that really confused me was, well, no one in my family has ever been highly allergic to anything. And, you know, usually when you get diagnosed with something, you kind of, you know, backtrack. Well, okay, which family member has this? Or could I have gotten it from, you know, my mom, my dad, a grandparent? Like, you're literally racking your brain. And me, as a person, I'm very investigative. I really like to try and find out as much as I can so I know what to do. And I, I've always been really proactive when it comes to my health, and I didn't want to just you know, take what they said and give up, you know, so I I would go to the doctor, I would ask questions, I made sure to not miss any appointments. So at this time, I had no clue what holistic medicine um, was, and it was just unheard of, really. And so I was told by that allergy specialist, like, okay, well, since you have, you're highly allergic, even to this area, we're going to prescribe you a medication which helps with your histamine levels. I was like, okay, So I was constantly having to get, I was constantly having to get refills um, from the pharmacy and these refills, of course, like when you're having to keep getting medication after medication, um, it can get costly. And it wasn't like I just got that one. I had to try all different kinds and, you know, different milligram dosages to find the right one that worked to keep my system, my symptoms at bay. So after some trial and error, we found one that seemed to really help me. And at that time, all I cared about was, I just don't want these hives to show up. I don't want to see them because it really made me insecure. And one of the things that would happen, um, so not all of my allergies gave me the same reaction, that my biggest problem was with nuts, berries, and avocados. Anytime I ate anything with that, I would start to get hives on my neck, on my face, and it would, you know, it would just freak me out. I'm just like, I don't want this. You know, I really, I was really getting self-conscious about it. Um, And over time, you start to get really um, scared of eating food. You almost get triggered where you're just like, you know, if you're at a restaurant and you see all these ingredients and you're like, oh, shoot, I can't have this. I can't have this. And you almost don't even want to eat. And that's kind of what I felt in the beginning was I was just so scared of food and what it would do. And so I was very, very cautious and I had to eat extremely plain. And when I mean extremely plain, I'm talking like five to six things. That was all I was told I could have. And I even still have the packet from my allergy specialist where it shows, you know, all the different sensitivity levels that are in there. And yeah, it was a really um, hard time and I got really um, depressed because I just felt like, you know, I'm so young. Why am I having to live so limiting and also living in a place that I was allergic to? It kind of makes you feel like I can't be here. So then during that deployment, I did go back home to California for a couple months just to give myself a break. I really didn't want to have to keep taking medication. So during that time, I did get off the medication. When I got back to Texas, I was probably only there for maybe uh, like six more months or so. And then we were able to move. So that was really helpful. So thankfully in the military, there's a thing called um, compassionate reassignment. And it's where if you are dealing with an illness or a condition and the area that you live in doesn't have like the proper care or it's really impacting your health, you can move. And so we moved and we were able to move to Georgia. So in Georgia, wonderful. I had no allergies there. It felt like a great new chapter for me. Um, Even though I wasn't allergic to the environment, I was still allergic to food, right? So I was still avoiding food. And the number one thing you're taught when it comes to allergies is just stay away from them. Don't expose yourself to them um, because your reactions are just going to get worse. That is what was really drilled into my mind at that time. So I was just highly, again, very highly um, cautious. 
And there were times, I will admit, that if I really wanted to eat something, let's say chocolate covered strawberries, because, <laughs> you know, there's, I used to be able to eat berries whenever and didn't have to think about it, right? So I kind of did this thing where I'm like, okay, if I do want to eat something that I'm technically allergic to, I'll just take a Benadryl afterwards. That way I don't get the reaction and I can kind of have, you know, this guilty treat. So I did do that um, from time to time just because I didn't want to feel like, again, I couldn't eat anything at all. But one thing that developed while I was living there was I had extremely bad gut and digestive issues. And the way I figured out that there was something extremely wrong was my bowel movements changed significantly. I was always bloated and inflamed. Um, my anxiety was really bad, but at that time I didn't realize that it was impacting my anxiety. When I look back now, I realize the connection. But back then, you really only notice the external um, the external things that are going on with your body. So yeah, I noticed yeah the bloating, inflammation, you know, the weight changes. It was really hard to um, to detox. I noticed that I it was hard to lose weight unless I drastically changed what I was doing. Um, another thing that I had dealt with while living in Texas before moving to Georgia was I had an accident where I fell and it caused nerve damage in my legs. And so that was another thing <laughs> that really weighed on me because not only was I dealing with severe allergies and already feeling very limited, like a prisoner in my own body, now I have this nerve issue and that was its own journey in itself because if you are familiar with nerve pain, anything that touches the area that the nerves are not working correctly, it feels highly sensitive. So for me, I had fallen and my left leg was affected more than my right, but everything felt like a sharp shooting pain. There were times, especially when I had just gone into that accident, um, where I felt like my legs would give out and it did. Like, I'll give you one example. When I was grocery shopping once, I was just walking down the aisle and out of the blue, my left leg gives out and I fall. And you're thinking, okay, I'm in my 20s. There is no reason why this should be happening. And so I kind of had to do this thing where if I went to the store, I for sure had to push a cart because that was going to be what was going to keep me up. And for a while after that injury, I did have to wear a foot boot. And I was told during that time, just wear the foot boot as a support and, you know, obviously stay off your leg. And there's no way to know when the nerves are going to feel even somewhat normal. So I was already, <laughs> I was already very emotionally drained from the allergy situation, now the nerve damage. And at that time, I didn't know my right leg was affected as well, but apparently it was, and I'll get to that later. So after we get to, to Georgia, um, yes, I'm noticing my gut issues, my digestion issues, but the biggest thing that I wanted to fix was, um, you know, figure out my nerve problem. So I was seeing a podiatrist for some time, but just like anything in Western medicine, it takes so long to get that referral to see someone else. Um, so after a lot of trial and error, back and forth, you know, they put me through physical therapy. I finally see a podiatrist who did significantly change my life. And I'm so thankful for that whole team in Georgia, Dr. Robitaille. And it came out, I think, I want to say it was over six months or so where they determined that you do need to have surgery to fix the tendon. They put stem cells in my ankle, which was going to help repair that. And another thing I had to do in order to keep my nerve pain and everything at bay was I had to get nerve block injections. So the nerve block injections I would get in my left leg, it was kind of somewhat near my knee. And I had to do that for so long, like for weeks Multiple times per week, I had to get the shot. And then over time, depending on my symptoms, we would kind of wean it off, like less and less shots. At one point, it was, you know, once a, um, once a week, and then, you know, twice a month, and then once a month. And then to a point, the reason why I stopped it was because when I found out I was pregnant, they didn't know on what the causes would be if I were to continue getting those shots. 
and I was carrying my baby, my son. And I completely understood because, yes, we don't know, like, what side effects that could have caused. So, so that's when we stopped it. And, I mean, my biggest concern there was I'm really not trying to, you know, have my leg give out while pregnant. It was a very scary time for me because I didn't know how safe it was for me to even be up and about. And again, another fear. I just feel like all the things I've had to deal with instilled a lot of fear in me on in living. I was, I was fearing on doing things in general. And luckily, I've been working remotely since 2012. And that's a whole nother journey. Um, but it led me here to being my, um, my own boss and being a serial entrepreneur that I am. And now this podcast... So that was one thing I was thankful for was at least I already had a job that kept me at home despite how sick I felt that day or did not. And I was at my desk. So it felt safe, right? So working from home has always felt safe for me because regardless of whatever condition I'm in, I'm still able to deliver um, from the comfort of my own home. So... When my gut and digestive issues, so after I got the surgery, time has passed. And keep in mind, my whole journey has been, it was five years of trial and error, not knowing what to do. And then my holistic journey started in 2017-ish, 2018. So it's pretty fresh for me, but a lot of progress has been made since. So I'm so thankful for that. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to my gut and, um, digestive system, so I figured, okay, like I'm kind of like going through my list, right? I'm like, okay, have my allergies at bay done. Okay. It's resolving my leg done. So the next thing was my gut and digestive and, you know, at the doctor, they're just telling me, oh, you have this, you have this, like, you know, just telling me that I have all these conditions. Um, and at one point, they were just telling me, you know, you just need to take Metamucil, take Miralax, and take all these things to help you. And I've, in my gut, I've always known that taking a bunch of medications wasn't good for you. I always knew, especially when you watch those commercials on TV where they're like, oh, we have this new medication that will work for you, but here are all the symptoms you may experience. And that was something I didn't want to deal with. I'm like, no, (laughs) it's like you're only adding to the list of things you have to solve, right? You're only adding to the list of things that you're going to have to address at some point. And I was not trying to do that. I was just trying to solve things and move on, solve things and move on. I didn't want to play this game. So, and keep in mind during all this time of my journey, I'm, I'm working a lot. I'm going to school you know, I have a family, I'm trying to balance all of these things. And I knew that if I'm not feeling good, if I don't feel healthy, if my health isn't where it should be, it's only going to get worse over time. And the people around me are, you know, it's it's only going to cause issues. Like I, I've always felt like I needed to be at the best health possible to do my job, whether it's be you know, a business owner or, you know, a good partner or a great mom, a dog mom, you know, I just, I had a lot of pressure to get better. That was my goal was to get better so you can be better for everyone else because you can't give from an empty cup, right? So after, again, so after all this trial and error of, you know, just take this and try this and try this, nothing helped. And, you know, you just, again, you just get so frustrated So before I became a mom, they did want to do a colonoscopy. And I had one scheduled to do that. And (laughs) the universe is really funny. So finally, when it was time to get my colonoscopy, and it takes a lot of time, you know, to be able to get this scheduled. Like, it's not like you can call your doctor today and you can get it done next week. Like, there's a wait list. There's so many things to work around. So it comes up that my colonoscopy is, you know, about to happen. And I tell them, hey, um, I just found out that I'm pregnant. Am I still able to get this procedure done? Because we've been waiting so long. And um, really what they wanted to see was if I had cancer in my colon, because all the symptoms I was experiencing looked like it was colon cancer. So I was definitely 
concerned or it was the early stages anyway, right? So they're like, okay, we can't do it while you're pregnant. You're going to have to do it after. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, so we're going to have to wait so long. And again, I'm worried, I'm worried. And so at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to have to make sure I'm eating a lot of fiber. That way my stomach and my um, colon aren't suffering, you know, like it isn't, it's not stressed out. So I have my son and well, I'll rewind a little bit further. Um, we were already in the process of trying to move back to our home state in California. And so we knew it was coming up. We just didn't know exactly what time frame, where in California. Because if you know anything about the military lifestyle, you don't even know where you're moving, like hardly ever. Sometimes you'll find out a month in advance, two months if you're lucky. Even earlier than that, if you have, um, you know, a chain of command that lets you know. But really, it's you. I'm trying to explain in a way where it makes sense. But basically, everything is so last minute. So three days before my son is born, my father-in-law passes away. And so that caused, and still, you know, there's a lot of grief behind that because it really affected our family in ways I can't even begin to explain. That is like a whole nother thing. Um, But that was really hard on us. And just like they say with holistic medicine, stress is the number one cause for a lot of things. I found out more about why managing stress is important, not just so you can sleep better, but it really comes down to, you know, mindset, your energy, and just your overall being. And so now I understand it more, but back then I I was still learning. This is why it's a journey, right? <laughs> so after my father-in-law passes away, I have my son. A month later, I want to say actually... Yeah, about a month and a half, almost two months later, we move. We do the move from Georgia to California. We drive for a week, and it's multiple of us. So that was already very crazy in itself. And we're thinking this is going to be a very, you know, great chapter, exciting chapter for us all because this is something we've been waiting on for so long. Obviously, it wasn't the same because one of our family members was no longer with us, but we were just glad to finally be in our home state. Um, because we have been away for so long. At this point, it had been six years since we had lived back in California. So we really did try to make the best out of it. During this time, of course, when you're a new parent, (laughs) a lot of stress and anxiety comes out of that. And I didn't realize, I didn't realize how how much more anxious I would get from being a mom. So my anxiety actually skyrocketed even more and I was trying so many ways to try to manage it. It got to a point where I thought I had to get on medication to help with my anxiety because this was probably the busiest I had ever been, right? With like my business and, you know, living in a new area in California. It was an area I'd never been in, really. I really didn't know it that well. So it was still new. Um, You know, I had a newborn. My partner at the time was very busy with his own things, with his work and school. So a lot of it I felt like I had to do on my own. Um, And so it got to a point where I'm like, you know, I, I think I need to check some things out. So I go to my doctor. I'm crying to my doctor. I'm telling her, look, I need, I just need some relief. Okay. <laughs> Cause my son, at least he, I got really lucky with him sleeping through the night pretty early on before he was six months. He was around four months. So that helped. But with all the other things that were going on, it was causing its own type of stress. So I was actually already given a prescription to help with my anxiety, but something in me told me, you know what? Because this is this is a red warning that really stuck with me and chose it made me choose not to take it. Was my doctor told me the second you take this, you can't just get off of it. Um, once you start taking it, you have to continue on, or there's going to be other issues. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, but what if like I don't like the way I feel while I'm on it? What if it really does change what I'm like? Like I was truly scared on like what it would do. 
to just me and, you know, my brain chemistry, once you put that type of chemical in your body. So I had the bottle and at this time I had one of my dearest friends in town and she was actually helping me. Um, because she brought her son with her too. So it was really great that we all got to get together. Um, we had met in Georgia and at this time my partner had broken his leg. <laughs> so on top of, you know, the move, the newborn, getting used to everything, my work, and then he, and I'm dealing with my own health issues and then he breaks his leg. I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to handle all of this. And so that's why um, my friend Blanca and her son KJ came. And even though it was just for a week, it was the best thing I could have asked for because otherwise I would not have had the same type of help. And where we were living at this time, we were hours away from our friends and family. So that's why they couldn't really help much either. So around that same time, I was like, you know what? Nope, I'm not taking this medication. I'm going to do some research. And I had been hearing previously about um, CBD. And it's funny because I feel like a lot of people don't understand what CBD is. Like they get what weed is, but CBD by itself on why it's such a huge beneficial thing that you could take. <clears throat> so basically, CBD... <coughs> excuse me. CBD is... A part of TH, I'm, <coughs> my gosh, sorry, Pauline. So basically CBD is, it comes from cannabis, but you don't get the psychoactive properties of it. So you don't get high. Um, there's a lot of benefits that it does give you. Like it helps with, you know, inflammation. It helps with anxiety. It can help with like focus, so it gets rid of brain fog. There's so many things. And for me, I just knew I needed some type of stress relief to get me through. So when I first took CBD, oh my gosh, my life changed forever. I was like, I wish I knew about this sooner. <laughs> and I had grown up where I, you know, I didn't really drink or do, you know, any recreational anything when it comes to drugs. And that's not something that I wanted to do or was interested in. So I was very adamant about this. And I told, it was funny, when I went to the dispensary, I told them, I don't want anything that's going to make me high because that's not the goal. For me, this is very much about health and I just want to not feel so anxious, you know? And I found out much later on that I, I am, I did have really high anxiety and high functioning anxiety. <laughs> so it's funny the things you discover about yourself over time, right? So I start taking CBD, helps me a ton. I'm like, okay, great. I'm At least I'm handling that. I also found a naturopathic doctor, which was a recommendation to me by one of my dearest friends and business partner, Bella. And you will hear from her on my podcast soon as well. Um, but she referred me to this naturopathic doctor here in the Bay Area, and his name is Dr. Auer. And... I swear if I hadn't met him, I don't know where I don't know where I would be today. Everything that I learned from him, all the testing we did, all the supplements that he gave me, all holistic, none of this is going to give you side effects or cause more issues to your health. It's all to help your body heal. And turned out, yes, everything I had been feeling was showing up on my chart cuz for a while you're thinking maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, this is all in my head. Like, you really don't know. You start to not really trust yourself because you're like, I've been through so much. How am I now? It's like a roller coaster. And now it's one thing after another, after another, up and down. But it was just such a relief that after I went through all the extensive testing, and I'm telling you, we did everything. And these types of tests you would never get through your main doctor. Never. Because the whole point of holistic health is to find the root of the problem. And I always emphasize the root because if you're trying to solve anything in your life, you want to find out where it came from, where it all started, because anything you do outside of that is just a band-aid and you're not actually healing. You're just kind of postponing it, right? Like you're just kind of like, okay, I'll deal with it later. And you know, most people just want to take a magic pill for their symptoms and call it a day. But truly like you're never going to heal fully that way. 
And it you have to put in the effort. You have to put in the work if you really want to get better. And that's why it doesn't I know it, it doesn't sound convenient if it you if it means changing your whole life or having to change, you know, your lifestyle in general, but if it means you're going to feel better, look better for the long term, of course, why not? And after everything I had been through, I figured I have nothing to lose, but all I know is I need to resolve all of this. So after seeing him, the, my functional medicine doctor, everything changed. I finally started to feel better. I finally saw the results I've been looking for. I finally felt relief, relief from everything that I had been dealing with. And so imagine five years of suffering to now being able to finally, you know, do things that I enjoy. We figured out my allergies, like, and honestly, this was just the start. After working with him, it opened a whole new door. So from there, you know, I continued with my CBD. I continued with um, the protocols and things I learned from him. It led me to the path of working with a woman who has her own company called Food Over Drugs, um, and her name is Sheila, and she is a detox specialist and herbologist. And basically, any illness or anything that you may be dealing with, there's basically an herb out there for you, a blend, and she makes all these blends herself, and it will cure them. So I've gone, I've been able to detox this way. I've done her five day, I'm sorry, ten day guided cleanse where it's only raw fruits and veggies and that was life-changing because you're doing a really hard reset on your body this way and for me I just figured oh my gosh like after all this time after everything I'd gone through even though it took this long I'm just so thankful that my journey brought me to all the right people and just learning all the right things in my circle and just life-changing because now I'm able to eat whatever I want. Yes, my allergies are gone. Imagine being told this is how you're just going to have to live for the rest of your life. This is it. To it's gone. And how did I do it? Was through food. I solved my allergies with food and herbs. No medication. No shots. Nothing. And it sounds crazy, but... After what I've been through, I can definitely see the difference on the improvements. And now I don't have gut and digestive issues. I did end up having to get two colonoscopies at one point um, while being here in California. And thankfully, there was no cancer. And that was already a huge scare because I'm thinking I'm way too young to be having cancer. I just had a baby. There's no way, right? So I just had had to put a lot of my faith in God and just trust that everything was going to be fine. Even though I had been suffering for so long, it's going to be fine. And I can't rave about it enough <laughs> about all the specialists that I've, I've worked with. I mean, I even saw, you know, an acupuncturist and she's amazing. Um, she's helped me a lot with, you know, just like with my nerve pain and just general pain in the body. And I even did cupping through her. So I, since I've mentioned that I'm a very investigative type of person, I know there's not just one way to heal. And that's one thing you'll understand and hear about through this podcast series is there's so many layers, so many things you can do to heal. Uh, another thing I want to mention, because it's also been very beneficial for me, especially when it comes to trauma, is doing quantum breakthroughs, you know, getting rid of limiting beliefs working on your energy and your mindset. I've done that through my business and life coach, Danny Kenny, and through my dear friend, Bella Zing- Zingali. And so for me, it was all about healing from inside out. And because I wanted to thoroughly heal myself, I wanted to heal my mind. I wanted to heal, you know, my energy. I wanted to heal my body like everything. I just wanted to feel reborn because of after everything I'd gone through all these years. And I did notice that my health got even worse when I was going through, you know, big life changes. And I I did go through a couple more um, big life changes, which really challenged me in ways where I'm just like, 
okay, this is another thing I got to deal with. You know, it was just, um, once again, things felt like one thing after another. But after especially things changed within my family and just overall my life, I had to tell myself, like, you know what? Even though things aren't what I thought they would be like, and now I'm doing a lot of this, you know, very differently than I had ever planned. And I'm a big planner. Anyone who knows me knows that. I like to plan as far in advance as possible. But one thing I learned that through this chapter of my life, which I call this the Phoenix chapter, and I mentioned this in a book that I co-authored, the Mompreneur Memoirs book, I talk about my journey and I call this the Phoenix chapter. And the reason why the Phoenix bird is a very great symbol for me is I know that after what is all that's happened in my health, my personal life, my career, this chapter is me being reborn, rising from the ashes, starting over and living a new life. And there's a lot of power with that, of just not feeling like a victim of all the bad things that have happened to you but of taking them as lessons, taking that as, you know, what did I learn from this? So it's wisdom. And I love talking to other people and telling them my story because no matter what it is that you're going through, I know that this could potentially inspire someone else and let them know that life isn't over. You may be really sick for a year or years, but it doesn't always have to be that way. And my whole mission with this podcast is to show people that you can take control of your health. You don't have to be a victim or a prisoner in your own body. You can heal from anything that you have been diagnosed with. And there's so many ways, alternative medicine ways to get that help. And yes, it may take some time to research, you know, your local providers, but that's another reason why For me, bringing on guests every week that are experts in their own fields and their own businesses that can share with us, you know, their knowledge and their tools on what has healed them and what has helped their clients and just people around them. Because I will tell you, every expert I've talked to, they had their own journey that they had to go through to heal from. And it's what it's. It is what has brought them to where they are now to be able to share that experience and that information with their um, with their clients. So all of us have a story. All of us have a journey, a healing journey that we know can help someone else. And there's countless other resources. And I'm just so excited to bring that to my listeners, to whoever is listening, wherever you are in the world. And that's another fun thing is, I have guests from all over the world. I'm talking the Himalayan mountains of India, Indonesia, UK, just Europe in general, Canada, and of course, guests here in the US. And I can't wait to hear from even more as this podcast continues on. And I hope it never ends because honestly, I know that if I could help at least one person, from them hearing my story or hearing another guest story, then I've done my job. And my calling is to do this and to let people know that your journey isn't over. You will heal. Yes, it's going to take time and effort, but you have the resources at your fingertips, not just from listening to this podcast, but just from doing some research um, for your local area. So... Yes, so that is my story, and I mean, that, that's pretty summarized, I would say, <laughs> but of course, if you have any questions at all or would love to hear more, I would be happy to connect with you, and I'm just happy to be here. I know this is exactly where I'm supposed to be when it comes to my journey, and part of it is I feel like I went through this just so I could help other people. Um So holistic medicine, the holistic lifestyle is amazing. It's beautiful. You will learn a lot and it never ends, right? It just continues on. There's so much to learn. And every week I'm learning so much from everyone I'm talking to. And I hope you do too. So thank you so much for listening. And you can find me on all of the social media platforms, 
All the links will be in the description and show notes. So thank you for listening and I hope to hear from you soon.